Where is he? He's never on time. Where's Yossi? Can't fly a drone, can't park a car. Where's Yossi? Jose, one second on the charcuterie. I'm waiting for Yossi. Where's Yossi? <gasps> There's Yossi! We've been waiting for you. Jose is inside preparing an amazing charcuterie. We're at Lama Ray. You gotta be on time. This is a classic New York City restaurant. And you know what? We're gonna go check it out. Let's roll. Jose, you're here. Yeah, yeah. The man himself. How are, How are you? you? Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you for coming. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, wow. What do you have going on over here? I'll have nice. uh, some charcuterie for you to try. That's what I came here for, for charcuterie. And, awesome. And, you know, I'm going to try some different things that the uh, charcuterie that you're making out. You know what? You might have come around and talk a little bit more about the charcuterie. Happy. Come, come around. France, at least, when they charcuterie, you know, they start with a nice glass of wine. So before we actually start enjoying some charcuterie, which is why I came here tonight, explain to me what exactly charcuterie is and how is it pronounced? Uh, it's pronounced charcuterie. Okay. And basically, this was a, a clever way uh, for butchers and families on all days to utilize every single ounce of animal, whatever it is a cow, whatever it is a pig, whatever it is a lamb. Uh, there was little piece of meat that the uh, little scraps they left alone and you know they could not uh, go to waste. So they figured out a smart way, so that's why the sausage came. Little piece of meat, they ground them up, they put on the natural casings of the animals, that actually is in this, in this kind of animals, and they dry them up and you can the salamis and all the sausage sauce. And the other parts of the pieces, uh, they, they cook them on, on the own, on own animal fat. And you come up with the pâtés, the ridettes, and there's a couple of two that we that we come up that in the restaurant that they developed the recipes for it was one is the veal, that's the veal bacon here. That's the veal bacon right over uh, there. That was out of necessity because uh, we we never that happy with the beef fry, so we always need something smoky to give flavors to soups uh, and and other dishes. It also has something that could utilize the bacon. So we come up with the idea, pick up a breast of veal. Uh, put, it, put it in a brine, smoke it, and you come up with a... How very long is the process good. to get from the from the piece of meat to what we see on the table it, it over takes, there? Uh, it takes about uh, over a week. Oh wow, okay. Because there's about three, four days of brining, then uh, after the brining you have to smoke it, and after smoking, that's that's it. And so that's it, it takes, that we can enjoy process. and everything. Exactly. Where are you from originally with your accent? I'm uh, originally from Portugal. From Portugal? Yeah. And when you were from Portugal, did you have charcuterie and sausages and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as much as the French. Uh, but yes, you have actually, you have a very famous sausage in Portugal that has to do with uh, our, with the Jewish heritage, you call it later. Right. That's a sausage made with wild game. Oh, wow. That uh, by the time of the Inquisition, when they decided to kick out the Jews, some of them decided to stay. And they have what they call the, 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 the Inquisition police that go to their own homes to make sure they actually and to understand they are really uh, convert they want to see the meat pork so when they come up with a clever idea making a sausage so this the, was the trying to and, and trick them uh, exactly. they, 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 were, oh, they were happy because they thought they were eating pork and actually they were eating uh, like pheasant and partridge whatever wild animals they have around they were, so, that were coaching that they exactly. could eat now let me ask you a question the owner of Lama Ray, which is you, how many years have you been here? Uh, since the opening. I how many years is that? Uh, 25 years. 25 years. You opened in 1995. Because you're a classic here. You're like one of the most the most classical restaurants, kosher, in, I don't know, I think all of America. People from all around the world, when they come to New York, have to come to Lama Ray. Have to come Thank and enjoy Lama Ray. Thank you. What do you... What, what do you owe that to? What do you attribute your success to for uh, that? I think that you opened the kosher restaurant way before this this crazy food uh, culture that all exists all over the United States, all over the world. So at the time, the food culture was not as strong and there was really nothing in terms of food kosher-wise. It was very, you know, there's one or two places that were doing very good things, but very limited. And I think the fact that both me and my partner, we're not kosher, we're not Jews, so we came from an outside world perspective, looking in. So we kept our standards, we kept the way we thought about food, and just did what you thought to doing, using, following the, the, the kosher rules. What made you want to do kosher? Uh, it was a long story, we need about an hour. But, uh, <laughs> we don't have an hour. Uh, exactly. Uh, basically, it was uh, some of our clients, they were, they were, uh, they were, Jewish and they were coming to my old restaurant layout, I don't know if you are familiar with, where I'm Tommy Bordan became famous. Oh, wow. There was, I actually hired him a long time ago to be my chef over there. 
And uh, some of the people were coming, they were at a point where they, their kids were getting married and they were not kosher, they were not religious, and their kids were not brought up religious, and they married someone who was religious. And they started having problems going out with the families, out because they didn't like the kosher food or the kosher restaurants, they refused to go there. So and you the kosher feel part, that need by opening And they the convinced restaurant. us to say you should open a restaurant where I feel comfortable going and my kids shop up for going. So uh, that's that's all the bucket came about. Amazing, Lama Ray is now, you know what? You're it, you're Lama Ray, this you. is awesome. Thank you. Okay, let's get back to the charcuterie over here. What uh, do you have Actually, I forgot to mention meal? something very important. That's the jewel of the brother of the bucket. That's the beef jerky, okay? That's oh, wow. Is, I mean, you cannot keep up with the production. See, this is some of the most amazing jerky I've ever had. Like, legit, ever had. This is amazing. I don't know what your secret is. Again, it's, it's about the quality of the I mean, if you start with a good, a good brisket, you know, you end up with a good shirt. This is the grilled bacon. So, and uh, the, the grilled bacon, you use them to do actual bacon. Also, it's very good for shakur to eat, to eat like uh, the equivalent of an M sandwich. If you guys want to start it, right? Maybe there's some call me Sean if you like. And I'll show the baguette the way the French do and they shakur to eat. They just wait to get to the end, so we should try it with them. Jose, I want to thank you so much for your hospitality here, oh, going over everything. My pleasure. I am blown away by the charcuterie, what you have going on over here. Well, this has been an amazing experience. I got to learn all about the history of charcuterie, where it comes from, a little bit of the background of Lama Ray and how they became a kosher restaurant with two partners who aren't even Jewish and rocking it out over here in the kosher food scene for many, many years. Jose, I want to thank, thank you, you much. so My much pleasure. for having us here. Thank you. And you want to know something? La Mare is amazing! Thank you. Wasn't that clip amazing? Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get an endless supply of me! <laughs>